Another day, another dollar, gonna make you holler, something but a collar, finger banger holler, what? Well people, the shift is over. Could this be my third last shift? I don't know. Or second, what? No, tomorrow's my third last, this is my fourth last shift. Maybe. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. We're gonna go home, and I wanna take a look at Red Bike's tire, and pump some air into it, and then soap and water test it, and uh, see how dicked it is. So let's go home and do that, and um, just for the sake of it, there be the sign, and soon it'll be no more. Alrighty, well I'm home, so I'm gonna have to play a little bit of musical fucking chairs here, and get this here motorbike out of the way. Just fire it over here for now. Just gonna kick this chair out of the way. And, uh, Try and give myself some more space. This chair is coming in the house one of these days. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but uh, I want it out of the garage. Yeah, it's good to sit on and stuff, but fuck, it's always in the way. It's gotta go. But uh, I'm just gonna get this bike out of the way here, and then uh, we'll get the, this bike backed up, get it up on the cinder block, inflate the tire. Gotta go back to the car, grab my tire inflator. Uh, inflator. I don't know if Adrian left it here. Yes, he did. Good. Uh, the tire pressure gauge. So I can get a reading off the back tire, and then we'll give her the old spray down with uh, the soapy, 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 soapy water. And we'll find out if there's a perforation in the tire, and then we'll decide. We're gonna go buy another fucking bottle of this snot, and then, uh, and then give her... What tool? The bottle has a tool onto it. What kind of a tool are you, tool? Oh, is this a Schrader valve tool? That'd be awesome if it is. Oh my dick, it's on there. Is that what you are? Well, yes, you are a Schrader valve tool. Well, fuck, eh? I need to buy me some tie slime for my red bike, skeetily douche. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and inflated the back tire. Use my trusty, trusty, fusty pump with the uh, battery thing. So now what I'm gonna do is just give the wheel a good fucking dose of soapy water on the sidewalls to find out where the brake could be. And this would be easier with two hands. All right, the tire's all soaked up, and uh, I don't see any any leaks. But keep in mind, it's sitting up on the brick. And what's going on here? No, I'm not seeing any leaks. Like, fuck sakes, it's a brand new tire, dude. It shouldn't even I shouldn't even be doing this yet. This should be the black bike that I'm diagnosing. But I want to check the tread here for anything that looks like a nail. So. We're gonna slowly roll the tire back and examine away. What do we got here? What is this? That there is nothing. Okay, the tire itself looks fine. Oh, wait. Okay, that was nothing. What's this? Fucking flapping around. Little piece of rubber here. Oh, just some loose rubber that wasn't cut off at the factory. I don't know, it seems alright. I don't understand where the fuck the air is coming out of, unless it's the actual Schrader valve that it's leaking out of. I wonder if that's a thing. Where's the valve on this fucking thing, you know? You know? Like, I don't hear any leakage. But then again, I don't have the tire sitting on the ground, so there's like, no pressure force except for the pounds of air that are in it. But that should be enough to fucking show if there's a problem with the son of a bitch, right? You'd think? Well, I'm gonna hose her down some more, get her really saturated, and let her sit on the ground and see what forms. That sounds like a good plan. Yep. So as you can tell, this tire's all slick and she shouldn't, if she's having any problems, really start showing some foam bubbles. Oh, what's going on here? What is going on there? Don't fucking focus on it or anything, eh? Where the hell am I looking here? Where did I see that? Right there. You guys fucking bubbling away? You forming new bubbles or are you just old suds? You're just old suds. I don't know why this tire's leaking. Well, what I'm gonna do is grab that Schrader valve tool that of Adrian's, and uh, I'm gonna just try to tighten. Actually, you know what? I do recall somebody saying, grab the bottle, spray the Schrader. Let's do that. Any bubbles? <laughs> there are any bubbles? I like bubbles. No, no bubbles. It's not the Schrader valve. But then again, like I said, it's not sitting on the ground, so maybe it just needs that extra force of being sitting on the ground to start losing air. Fuck it, let's try it. Maybe I should nail it again with the soapy water, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna be enough on there for it to actually produce anything. So we'll just give her another fucking squirt gun here. Really get her on there. And uh, I don't know. It really sucks when you can't find the flaw. I don't want to get that chain because I just oiled that chain. Probably got the chain, but I just oiled the chain too on it. So uh, now it sounds a little nicer when you push it around, eh? Well, it still sounds like shit, but not as shit. I just need to find out what the fuck's going on with this tire. Get it situated because I want to ride this bike next. I like this bike. This bike's fun. And that, and I never ridden it. So, kind of want it. So you see right there on the jack shaft, you have that little antler sticking out. Or, sorry. Oh, yeah, right there in the back. I think, uh... 
no, that's the front one. So that front one right there, uh, it digs in. Look what it's done to my fiberglass job. And this is after two rides. Like it's, it's fucking dealing with it. Like this cover is not too bad looking for a, you know, a little redneck repair. I think it's pretty damn good, you know. Can't even tell it was broken over here until I fixed it. Can't even tell I patched this hole. It's all camouflage with mud. Fuck it. But uh, this weekend, we're thinking about going back out. Adrian, like I said on yesterday's vlog, he uh, got his chain and he was able to fix it all. Thing is, is, I can't hear any air leaking out of the tire. That's what's burning my balls. It's like she's losing air, but I fucking don't know why. Unless that thing's bubbling away. Is that thing bubbling away? How close can I get to it before she, she Sony's? Oh, right there. Back her out. Fucking Sony-ing on me. Hey, wait a second. I saw that. Did you guys just fucking see that? That bubble, that Schrader valve is leaking. Yup. I just, I saw it. Like Pug would say, I fucking saw it. Let's keep an eye on it, see if it does anything else. Look at it fucking go. Okay, so we know what the problem is. It's that thing. Now let's try and tighten it. Oh my goodness, zoom the fuck out camera. Uh, we'll try and tighten it with this tool of Adrian's. Maybe she's just loose. And if that's the case, then fucking right on. Crisis adverted. Somehow the valve stem got loose. Don't ask me how, because I don't know how the shit works. I don't understand why a valve stem will get loose out of the blue. Or for that matter, how the fuck am I gonna get this tool in there to tighten it up? Okay, right back guys. There wasn't much light in there. Well, there is now because I have a light on the camera, but basically this is what I had to work with for lighting, not much. And then all of a sudden it got really bright, why? Because I'm using my El Darte with a flashlight and I decided to use it for, for the shop. So that Schrader's nice and tight. Um, she was really loose. She was very, very loose. Uh, I was able to put at least a half of a turn into it. Now I don't know much about Schrader valves or how many fucking turns it takes to take one off, but I'm looking at that one there and I'm seeing some green death on the end, but that could just be the Schrader valve's color. I'm gonna give her another zap with the soapy water because I did tighten the fuck out of it. But if that didn't work, I might have to buy some sort of a, a valve stem cover replacement or some shit. We'll give her the dose, and we'll see if she bubbles. Fuck, I hope this works. This would be awesome. If it works, I'm going to take this bike in the backyard tomorrow and drive it for a little bit before i got to go to work. Yeah, buddy. I'll freaking take you for a rip, bud. How do you think about that? You like that kind? Yeah, you love that kind, don't you? Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, you do. But yeah, tire looks fine. I've uh, never... I should check the G6 for that, too. But I think the G6 tires are just fucked because they're G6 tires. And G6s are just fucked. But, um... Not seeing any sud formations in there anymore. Except for the ones that are already in there. So that might be a good sign. Yeah, so one thing I don't know is if you buy the whole valve stem. But chances are, by the time this video goes live, I'll figure it out. But I don't think it's leaking anymore. So what I'm going to do is... Chuck the capuchon back onto it, and we are going to leave it like that for tonight on its kickstand with the brick right here so that if it decides to fall over, it'll have nowhere to go. And I'll leave it like that with the pressure on the tire with the brick there to support it up in case it wants to go. It won't be able to go. Oh my goodness. And if it does go, well, fuck, I guess we'll have a gas spill on the floor tomorrow. Better move the battery box and the air pump. So yeah, we're all anxious to go into work today to find out what's really going on, right? With uh, the company and selling the company and all that. Some people, their main concern is, if Bell takes over tomorrow, do our benefits stop tomorrow? And if so, how long is Bell gonna keep us working and should we bother to fill out the 10,000 pages of paperwork to get on their drug plan, like their uh, benefits plan? For me, Seeing how the only drug that I have prescribed to me, well I have two, is uh, one's the Ventolin, or not the Ventolin, uh, what do they call it? Oh, I don't know. You know one of those guys for asthma? And my medicinal marijuana. That's the only thing. And the medicinal marijuana, I can't get companies to cover it anymore because of the new methods. So, whatevs. And Ventolin puffers aren't that expensive. I think they're 23 bucks a piece. and. I get one, like I got the one I'm using right now, this is awesome. The ones that I'm on right now are the ones that I got last October when I was going down to blokes. I don't know what the shelf life is for them, but people, ever since I quit smoking and switched to this, lots has changed inside this body. 
for instance, no longer allergic to peanuts. Who knew? Like, I haven't been able to have peanuts. It's been 30 years since I've had peanut butter. I had a peanut butter cookie at a buddy's house, and, well, I didn't know. I thought it was oatmeal. Uh, it turns out it was oatmeal peanut butter, and I didn't know, so I ate it, and I'm like, oh, fuck, bud. Uh, I'm allergic to peanuts. Like, I'm going to die soon. And he's like, oh, my God. He's like, how long does it take for it to kick in? And I'm like... I'm like, wait a second, like, this should have been kicked in like a long time ago. What the fuck's really going on? So I had no idea what was going on because normally it was like with peanuts, like not even like four months ago, I was in the office and one of the guys was eating those crack shelled peanuts, you know, the two peanuts and they shaped like a fucking figure eight kind of sort of. You know what I'm talking about, the shelled peanuts, for sakes. Well, he's eating those and just the smell of it was aggravating me, my, my nose. It was making me sneeze, making my throat itchy. Then my skin started to crawl, and I'm like, bro, you can't be eating peanuts in here. This is a... I, I talked about this on a vlog. I'm sure I talked about it on a vlog, you know? And that was pretty brutal. But then I had this oatmeal freaking uh, peanut butter cookie. Nothing happened. Now, I didn't start just eating peanuts right away, guys. I'm not a stupid idiot. You know, it could have been a fluke that nothing happened. So right away when I, I, I called my doctor and said, Doc, we need to set up an allergy screening. Um... You know, which arm do you want to use, left or right? I'll make sure it's shaved before I go over. And he's like, we don't do fucking scratch tests anymore. And I'm like, oh. It's like, no, 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 no. He goes, we just draw a vial of blood and then we test with that. So I'm like, oh, well, fuck, okay. So that's all they do. They just fucking crank out some blood and then, like, grab a cat and fucking rub it up against the cat and that the blood boils. It's like that movie The Thing, probably. You remember The Thing? When Buddy's like, we need to know who the alien is. So they draw Buddy's blood and then they touch a hot copper wire on it and the fucking blood dodged out of the way of the, of the wire. That dude was the alien. It's probably what they do for for allergies. They put it in a petri dish, then they grab a cat and fucking try to make, touch the cat on it. And if it dodges away, he's allergic. Can you imagine if that's how it was? That'd be fucking sweet. Probably not. It'd be kind of stupid, but that would be fucking sweet, maybe. So yeah, he does all the allergy tests, and then he tells me he's like, I don't know what the hell you did, and I'm like, what? And he goes, I'm like, am I still allergic to peanuts? And he goes, Adam, you're not allergic to anything. And I'm like, what? And he goes, you're not allergic to everything you were allergic to before. I'm like, yeah, and he goes, cut grass, cats, uh, fucking uh, smoke, um, cats, oh, dust, uh, mold, mildews, pollens, and especially peanuts. Like, it was all, it all came back negative. And he was like, did you take any antihistamines? I'm like, doc, I haven't had an antihistamine for over a month. And he's like, really? And he goes, you haven't had an he goes, somehow all your allergies shut off. He goes, I've seen people lose an allergy or two. But not every allergy they had in their life. He goes, have you noticed any new allergies cropping up? And I said, nothing yet, but I'll keep my eyes open. And then he gave me a prescription for an EpiPen. He goes, keep this fucker on you at all time. Just in case, you know, maybe your peanut allergy morphed into like a, a food, another food allergy. Or maybe you're scot free now and you have no problems. He goes, you know, one day you could bite into a peach cobbler and your throat inflates and you nearly die. Keep that EpiPen. That happens, stab yourself and get it over with. Get to the hospital and get treated. And then we'll confirm it for you and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, well it's good to know, good to know. So we'll just roll with that and see how she goes. So got me another EpiPen in case of emergencies, but I have no allergies. How fucked is that? And I'm, I'm blaming vaping because since I've quit smoking, I don't know. It's like... Things are happening inside of me and it's fucking awesome. Like things are changing and things are getting better and like not just food tasting better and I can smell and stuff. It's just everything's changing inside and like the fact that the allergies are gone is awesome because that means now I can headbutt scampers and my eyes don't inflate and I don't look like a fucking stoned out friggin' chihuahua. You know how chihuahua eyes are? They're big fucking buggy round things and they always look like they're blazed. Well, I, don't, I won't look like that if I headbutt my cat because I like headbutting cats. What else do you do with them, right? So I guess dad was dicking around uh, in his uh, basement there clearing out the old closet and basically uh, just throwing, just trimming the fats, right? Just throwing out stuff you never use and that's what he was doing and he came across something fucking awesome that he's dropping off here. Uh, not tonight, obviously. It's like probably one in the morning by now, but he's dropping off my first computer ever. We're talking about a Radio Shack TRS-80 Coco 2 fucking Tandy computer type thing. This computer didn't have a monitor. You plugged it into your television. Um, where is that? Oh, the toolbox is on. Uh, bolted on the back of my romper. And I think I threw out the components, but it had these like, because the old TVs back in the day when you hooked up an antenna, it was a screw and you had this like, fucking fork that you jammed in the screen and you tighten it down and you cinched it on, right? 
Well, this had a box, a little box attached to it that had a slider. At the top of the slider, it said TV. At the bottom, it said computer or game. And you'd plug your RCA, the yellow RCA from the computer, into the game. And then at the top, you'd have a, a screw-on coax that you plug into your, your TV. And uh, it would have a, a thing on the side for your cable TV would plug into as well or some No, that's what it was. A thing on the top plugging into the cable. Then the two guys, the two dinks went into the TV and that's how it worked. And then you'd have a slide selector, but it only worked if you were on channel 3. You had to be on fucking channel 3. So you turn your TV to channel 3, you slide the slider to game, you turn on the computer, and it started Microsoft DOS version, I don't remember what, it was like an old, old version of Microsoft's operating system that they, oh no, sorry, it was, oh fuck, I don't know who, Microsoft's written on the boot up screen because they supplied Microsoft Basic for the TRS-80 as a built-in language. The moment you turn it on, it says OK, and you have your cursor, and you can start writing fucking code right then if you wanted to, and she just goes. It's freaking sweet. Well, about as sweet as 8-bit computer with 64 kilobits of memory goes, you know what I'm saying? And no hard drive, and 5 and a half inch floppy drives. No, 5 and a quarter inch. 3 and a half is the little guys. But yeah, 5 and a quarter inch floppies. Yup. Freaking writes it did. Brutal. And I still fucking remember that computer, man. Uh, I was about three years old. I remember it costed dad about $500, and back then that was like two weeks of salary. Um, that's what he got paid, but back then, you know, he bought his house for $50,000. And you've seen his house. His house is like like 1,600 square feet, and he bought it for fifty two grand. My house is 900 square feet, I bought it for a hundred. He paid less than half of what I did for, my, uh, for his house that I had to pay for mine, and he got double the friggin' real estate, pretty much. So that's how things were back then. They were more, you know, not as expensive, a lot, really a lot cheaper and stuff. But no, he picked up that computer, and I remember my cousin Brian would come over with, uh, he had a bunch of video games for it and, and books on programming, and he loaned me his book on programming. Now, I didn't know how to read, but uh, my brother was in school, uh, I was in, I was three years old. I still haven't gone to kindergarten yet, or junior kindergarten, or whatever the fuck they call that nonsense nowadays. So I never learned how to read yet. And because we're going to a French school, you don't learn how to read English until you're like in third grade. I was too impatient. I wanted to learn how to program. So I initially started off by finding the programs because they always had a number like we'll go ten, and then you'd put in like uh, fucking print hello, what is your name? Twenty input. Uh, put in a string percent, like, and you can have it, like, so you can write back to it and stuff, and then check your syntaxes. No, it's just a bunch of nonsense. It was just, it was, it was Microsoft fucking basic, you know? Microsoft basic version, God knows what, so old, you couldn't make subroutines. It was, like, fucking, like, really, really, really core programming language. And, um, I really wanted to learn how to make the computer do stuff, so I grabbed the book, and I would find the code, and then I would just literally smash it out on the keyboard following, like, okay, this character, oh, that's, that's one, uh, I, like, that's like a hoop with a fucking long bar. It's a letter P, but I didn't know what the hell it was called back then. And then I slow, you know, watching, like, Sesame Street and shit, you figure things out, and then you just learn the keyboard. And that's why, like, come grade four, I remember that's when we, we got the computers at St. Anne's. They're little lexicon icons. Uh, those old icons with the fucking trackball, you're like, zing, and you just like fucking wail on it, and the cursor moves like a quarter of an inch. And uh, I found the basic programmer on there, and I started writing code, and I was typing really fast, and the teacher was like, holy shit, how can you type so fast? And it's like, when you've been doing it for a long time, you figure things out, right? And I'm like, I got a computer at home, that's what I told him, I got a computer at home. That's the way she goes. And I don't know, I've been thinking about picking up programming again. I like to uh, brush up on my Java and my C++ or my C or whatever the fuck you want to call that language now. Now I think it's C sharp and C major and minor and fucking C accent aigu and all that. And it's like, you know what, I want to brush up on my C, you know? And learn how to program, uh, not learn how to program, but like, you know, re-familiarize myself with everything. And, and I'd, maybe one day I'd like to design a game. I'd like to design a little game, something stupid, free, put it out there, let people play it, have a good time. And nowadays to make a game, it's so fucking easy. There's actually utilities out there that you can build a game and you don't need, need, need to know dick about programming. You don't even need to know dick about what an engine is. You just fucking go out there and fart out a video game like... Pretty awesome. But anyway, I'm rambling on a lot. 
And I gotta go inside because I gotta shoot a commenting on comments for fuck's sakes and get that up to the internet. And then I gotta edit the videos on this camera plus the romp, plus the romp, plus a bunch of. Oh, I got about nine videos to fart out tonight and I got nothing to go up tomorrow. So I'm calling her quits, people. Thanks for watching my video. We'll check on this tire tomorrow in tomorrow's vlog and make sure that she's all fucking gitsy witsy and happy slappy and back up to par. If anybody's ever heard about that before, of a tire valve being loose, can you please explain to me how that happens so that I can try and maybe prevent it next time? Unless it's something that happens and you just can't prevent it. It just, just comes out of nowhere and ruins your day. I don't know. But anyway, people, thanks for watching my video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. Questions, comments, concerns, stove them down below. Could be used on a comment here in comments, which I'm about to actually go shoot. Fuck. And until next time, people. Keep on vlogging.